Hello, Chill Computer Guy. Today we're in Reason 10. We are going to talk about side chaining. Yes, side chaining, a great subject. Now, there's a million different ways to side chain and propeller head reason. And so, in this video, I just want to cover a few ways. I personally prefer to use the SSL to side chain. I know you can use an external uh, compressor from the rack extension shop, third party, or some of the defaults here and um, propeller head reason, but. I prefer to just use the SSL. Why I prefer the SSL is just because uh, easy use, basically. And I really do like the character you get from side chaining on the SSL. Um, I used to use the external, you know, the M class compressor like everybody. And I quit doing that because I honestly like the way the SSL sounds better. I think that there's, it just sounds better, in my opinion. Um, now, like I say, there's a million ways to do this. Some people, including myself, used to use a sidechain bus. A sidechain bus is extremely convenient, but the problem with the sidechain bus is you can't sidechain your instruments separately. I do believe, I subscribe to the theory that when sidechaining some instruments, you want to have more sidechains than others. Let's say your bass. Maybe you want more side chaining on your bass and less side chaining on like your pad or something that's in the, the higher frequency spectrum. Um, when it really comes down to mixing your track, sometimes adjusting that side chaining is just what you need to get it to really sit together well. Um, and so that's why I discourage using a side chain bus. Um, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to side chain um, just a, a noise noise oscillator. So we have the Thor here. We got a noise oscillator plugged in there. Um, let's go ahead and listen to that. Okay. Nothing too complicated there. A simple noise oscillator, nothing going on there. And then we also have a 4-4 uh, kick drum pattern. Again, super simple, and that's just a sample in the NNXT, and that's actually a sample from the Drum Supply Library here in Reason 10. Um, it's the uh, BD Custom E, so it's a bass drum custom, and apparently it's in the key of E. All right, so that's what we got down here. We have the noise oscillator and the 4-4 kick drum. Now, let's go ahead and flip the rack around, and... Uh, Let's take a look. Now, this is a mixed channel. This is the standard mixed channel in Reason. And you can see we have an input, which is where you plug your instruments in. We have a parallel, which is a pre-out, which means this is a basically an output that is before the fader. So in other words, if you turn the fader all the way down, you're still getting a signal out of this pre-out. Uh, the dynamic side chain, this is where you bring your side chain in. This is basically hooked right into the uh, the key of the compressor okay so if you plug something in here this will actually turn blue and then we have a direct out now the direct out is basically the exact same as the input here in other words if I were to if I were to plug this direct out into a new mix channel it would be the same as plugging the Thor into a new mix channel in other words it's the exact same signal um, so that's the direct out so those are the four uh, outputs on the back there. Now the parallel out is what I recommend running into spider audio mergers and then running those to all your mix channels. That's in my opinion the best way to side chain here in Reason. More than likely you're not going to parallel your kick drum. If you were to parallel it, you'd be better off layering it in a Kong or Redrum or wherever you're doing your drums at to just layer those samples. Um, parallel is very very valuable when it comes to like vocals or some maybe lead instruments where you want to take a signal and you want two channels and you want to process those two channels separately that's what the parallel is and it's very very powerful um, and it's very very nice to have it right here on the mix channel and again the fact that you can just route it your way because you're in propeller head reason is pretty nice all right so to hook this side chain up what we're going to do is we're going to take the parallel of the kick drum channel and we're going to route it right into the dynamics okay and you can see the key turns blue 
So what we're doing is we're taking a parallel of the kick drum and we're running it into the dynamics key. We're running it right into the compressor, into the side chain input. Okay, and you can see that's turned blue. We can turn it on and off. If we don't want that side chain signal, we can just click here. and It'll turn that right off. Not only that, but you also have a CV for your gain reduction. So you can actually see your side chain right here. Um, very handy. Okay, so let's go up into the SSL compressor and we'll take a look at these settings here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and play this. And you can hear So you can hear that we have zero side chaining. To get the side chain, you want to turn on your compressor. See, you got the key light right there, so turn this guy on. And then you can see the LEDs lighting up. Now, the maximum side chain is going to be the highest ratio all the way to the right. Infinite ratio okay threshold all the way to the left release all the way to the left and fast on okay so ratio all the way right threshold all the way left release all the way left and fast attack that is the most intense side chain you can possibly get with the SSL okay um, what this is doing is it's making the ratio infinite which is the highest ratio. The threshold is minus 52 dB, which is the most intense threshold you can have. Release is pretty much instantaneous. This goes all the way up to 1,000 milliseconds. So that means it's going to let go of the signal right away. Now the fast means it's going to grab the signal right away. Okay, let's go ahead and listen to this with the maximum amount of side chain. So that's obviously a little obnoxious. Let's go ahead and what we're going to do is we're going to dial back some of these amounts and you're going to hear, because we're using a noise oscillator, you're going to really, really hear the difference in the character of the side chain. Very important. Listen up. So as you can hear, we've dampened back the side chain a little bit. Now I'm going to dial this to the maximum again because I want you to hear the difference between having the attack normal or the fast attack. Let's slow down the release now. Now one more quick thing about sidechain compression is you have to think about the kick drum as it's feeding into the compressor. You don't want the super low end muddy part of the kick drum to affect the sidechain. Now on the SSL there's actually a button right here right below the filters and you want to enable this on whatever channel you're trying to sidechain. Now I was just mentioning earlier that it's good to sidechain your instruments separately. Well, it's also good to use a high and low pass filter on your instruments, on all your instruments. So this is something that is very convenient if you're going to sidechain one particular channel. But if you're going to sidechain multiple channels, I actually recommend putting an EQ in the signal chain leading from the parallel of the kick drum to the key or to the spider uh, merger, I recommend putting an EQ in that signal chain and then 
doing basically a high pass uh, uh, filter. Um, in other words, cutting off your low end before it reaches the, uh, the side chain uh, input. Um, now right here, you can do this right here by just clicking this button here. And then if you turn on your, your high pass filter, Normally, you would see this filter here cutting off the actual signal of that particular mix channel. But if you click this button, it disappears because what this is, is this is cutting off the uh, side chain input. So I'll show you a quick example of that if we play this. So basically by setting this here it's telling us that everything below 100 Hertz is not affecting the side chain okay and as you can hear the side chain is a lot less intense because those lower frequencies of the kick drum are getting high passed off before they reach the uh, key and so um, that's something that's pretty handy if you're going to be doing side chain compression and you don't want that all that muddy lowing affecting your side chain, this is what to do: is click that. Now it's very important to realize you got to click that on the channel that you're side chaining. Thor, this is my noise generator. NN19, this is my kick drum. So you have your kick drum wide open, but your Thor, which is what I'm side chaining, that's where you want to go filter to dynamic side chain. And basically, it's taking this high pass filter and it's affecting the signal coming into the side chain so by setting this to 100 Hertz here in this example everything below 100 Hertz is not affecting the, the side chain and that's basically all that is now that's going to give you a different feel but but it is actually advised to not let all that saggy low end affect your um, your side chain okay this particular kick drum if you hear it is doesn't have a whole lot of low end it's a little bit of a punchy kick drum without a whole lot of low end like if this were like an 808 style kick drum this button would have a huge effect but since it is kind of a, a higher sounding kick drum if you listen to it You can hear that it's it's a little in the low, but it's not like a super low end kick drum. Using an actual EQ to cut off that low end. Why I recommend doing it that way is because that way you can use your high and low pass filter. Because the high and low pass filter are super valuable when you go into your mixing stage. So I don't recommend wasting them by filtering your side chain. That's not a good use of that particular filter. Um, in this case, I'm just using it as an example. So let's go ahead and take a look kind of briefly at setting that up. What you want to do is you want to use your utilities and you want to use your spider audio merger. Okay. Bring that in here. Uh, we're just going to use the, um, we're just going to use the M class EQ right here. Now the important part is you want your parallel to go into your audio out and then this to go into your uh, spider. And then these four right here can branch out. What I actually recommend doing is getting several of these uh, these spider mergers you know uh, duplicate them a couple times and then I recommend you know spidering them out this way There you go, and then rename them all side chain. So now what you have is you have your parallel signal going into your EQ, and then your EQ going into your spiders. And then basically you can route this to every single mixed channel. So then once you have this spread off, you have, you know, you have 4, 8, 12, you have 13 signals here. You can route this into the uh, side chain right here. And then as you add mixed channels, you can just keep branching off the side chain and then have it come into each individual uh, uh, channel there. 
and that is in my opinion the best way to do side chaining here and then your low shelf here you're going to want to find a frequency here which is let's say one 120 or this is going to depend on your kick drum it's going to depend on the sound because this is going to have a huge effect let's go 120 there and then we'll bring that down so what that's going to do is it's going to make that this it's going to make the signal that's coming into this side chain it's going to cut all the low end off of that so let's listen to that real quick there's after If we uh, go ahead and turn that on, you can hear that changes the character of the side chain quite a bit. But you're getting a cleaner side chain. Um, what I would actually recommend is having a whole separate channel just for your side chain and not even using. You can use a kick drum, but use something with a really fast attack and not a whole lot of low end. I mean you can side chain with just a clicking noise if you want to do that. Um, but this in my opinion is is my favorite way and in my opinion the best way to side chain here in propeller head reason is to either have a kick drum or just have a sound that is a 4-4 sound that uh, is routed into a mixed channel and then you have a parallel going into an EQ, you cut off that low end, and then you spider that out to all your mix channels. And then once you do that, going up in your SSL, and then adjusting the, the ratio threshold, release, and fast, adjusting these different for each instrument. In other words, you might want your bass side chained really severe. You might want a bunch of side chain on your bass and not as much side chain on some of the, uh, you know, like the pads or the atmosphere of the chords. You might want a little less side chain there. So, in my opinion, the best way to do it, that's it. And I would recommend even taking, you know, the MIDI data from your kick drum uh, and just sliding that into a, a whole new separate sequencer lane and then putting a sampler in there with like even a clicking noise, some sort of a noise, something with a fast attack, but doesn't have all that muffly low end because that muffly low end is going to affect your side chain. It's going to make it uh, not as not as precise, not as precision. So that's it. We've successfully uh, side chained a noise oscillator. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and uh, change the noise oscillator to a bass.
anyway, that's it. Look at uh, look at Europa and Thor right next to each other. That's kind of a cool sight, isn't it? Let me see if I can get them a little bit closer. Yeah, look at those. Look at the Thor and the Europa. Oh, some beautiful uh, synthesizers. This is some propeller head reason right here. And then we got the old NN19 right above there. Anyway, um, yeah, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Give me some thumbs up. I'm going to have many, many more quick little tutorials like this. I don't like to, uh, you know, half hours. I don't like spewing. What I like to do is take the best, cut up the bad parts, and really give you guys the best. Um, but anyway, we went over side chaining today. Uh, we've successfully side chained uh, a noise oscillator, and in the process, we learned a little bit about side chaining, and uh, also got some kind of creative juices going and whatnot. You know, like I say, these these uh, videos, tutorials, whatever you want to call them, they're not for beginners. They're not for experts. They're for everybody. Um, and if I just inspired you to work on music, then I feel like I've done my job. So please do subscribe, give a thumbs up, and we'll see you guys again.